Jim and Lillian, this is Kevin again from Alabama, and I wanted to uh, contact you and let you know that I, for one, as I'm sure many other of your listeners feel, that we do not want the roar to go away. I have gotten to know both of you in a way that is very odd, actually, because I've never met either of you. But I know you as though you were a friend living close by, because we've talked, I've listened to you, and I've listened to things that have gone on in your life, things that uh, have really just given me the opportunity to know who Jim Fiddler and Lillian Fiddler are. So I think I speak for many when I say that I am a roar whore, and we don't want the roar to go away. Bring the shows back. Never mind if you don't have the original themes and little intros and outros and whatever. Just um, whatever you decide to uh, put together and share with us. That's what we want to hear. We have learned to enjoy knowing you, both of you, and enjoying what you have to offer us. Because how many of us actually will get to go to Newfoundland? It's a wonderful place, and I hope to go there someday. But it's so different from where I live. Before I knew either of you, Newfoundland was the unknown. And now it's somewhat known. But again, keep up the work. We want it. We need it. We've got to have it. Yes, got to, got to. Jim Fiddler of Republic of Avalon Radio. Well, Jim and Lillian, wonderful to see the roar back in, um, well, in juice now. It's definitely been missing, so it's good that its place has once again been filled, and we, your listeners, hope that it continues for many a long year, or at least a a long while. Hey, this is Mike Busbom calling you from Vienna, Austria, just wondering what's ever happened to the roar. It's hard to get with the roar if episodes don't come. I haven't uh, heard anything for several months. I wonder if I accidentally unsubscribed, or are you guys on an extended vacation? Maybe you've taken a sailboat from Newfoundland and have tried to navigate the Atlantic and maybe you found some romantic polar island in the North Atlantic and have stopped off on the way and you can't make any more recordings because your solar powered digital recorders can't be charged because there's just not enough sunshine. Anyway, been thinking about you and hope that everything is well. I hope to hear from you soon. Take care and all the best. Bye. Hey Jim and Lillian, this is Slough. Just sending you uh, a little shout out and uh, welcoming you back to the airwaves, or well, not the airwaves, but the, uh, uh, the welcome back to the internets. <laughs> anyway, I was delighted to see the recent uh, episode of the Roar, and uh, Jim, you just broke my heart with your <laughs> with your reaching out for some feedback, and I just had to drop everything and uh, and send you something just to say that uh, no matter how long between episodes, I will always stay subscribed to The Roar. Uh, Every time uh, an episode comes in, uh, I'm just taken away. I'm taken away to to the Republic of Avalon, and I enjoy it all the time. Keep up the fabulous work. Don't let the technical stuff get you down. Looking forward to the new album, and again, it's great to have you back. See ya. Hey, Jim, what's going on? This is Chris Trapper calling from Philadelphia. Um, and I just wanted to wish you a very, very happy 50th podcast. That is quite an, ac- an accomplishment, so just wanted to wish you well, and congratulations on that. Okay, I will talk to you soon, hopefully. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hi, Jim and Lillian. This is uh, Carrie from Ohio. I know it's been a long time since you've heard from me. Um, I was offline for the longest time, and when I finally had internet access again, 
I was very disappointed to see that uh, there weren't any new podcasts coming out. So I'm utterly thrilled that you have a new podcast out, and I'm looking forward to many, many more, I hope. So keep them coming. Um, I am out here listening in Ohio. So um, good to hear from you again, Jim. Bye. Sono lieto di poter rievocare in poche parole le esperienze delle prime trasmissioni radiotelegrafiche a grandi distanze da me felicemente eseguite attraverso l'Oceano Atlantico il 12 dicembre 1901. Republic of Avalon Radio. It's zero hours Avalon Standard Time. 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 Hmm, what's this here? What's it look like? It sounds like Republic of Avalon Radio. Fellers, just listen up here one minute. I want to tell you something. My, my, my pappy used to tell me when I was but a sawed-off runt, he used to say to me, he'd say, Boy, yeah, he used to call me that back in them there days. He said, Boy... You, you, you side something up and you ain't sure what it is? Well, you just take one good look and you remember if it looks like a snake and it hisses like a snake and it roars like a snake, then it must be episode 51 of Republic of Avalon Radio. Republic of Avalon Radio, you're with the roar. I am Jim Fiddler, as far as I can tell. And uh, of course, as you just heard, this is episode 51 of Republic of Avalon Radio. It's great to be back. And uh, a big thanks to Kevin in Alabama, Hope in Ohio, Carrie in Ohio, Chris in Philadelphia, Mike in Vienna, Austria, and Slough in New York City for sending in those little bits for us at the beginning. Well, this episode, I used to say this week, and I sort of stopped saying that because there was no guarantee that there would be a show every single week. But it's sort of seeming to take that kind of a shape again. Uh, it's been a week since the last episode, and here we are with another one already. So why don't I just carry on and say that? Um, this week on The Roar... We're going to keep it pretty simple for you, play a little bit of music, and uh, I'm going to take you into the studio and show you a little bit uh, of what I'm doing with making this album I'm making right now, and kind of talk to you a little bit about the process, how it's working, and how I'm going about it, and uh, you may find it interesting, especially the concept of uh, pretty much making a record yourself, and not having a band already uh, fresh off of uh, touring for a year and getting the songs all perfect and then you just wang into the studio and whack the songs down and everyone's happy uh, I don't have that luxury here at, at this particular point in time so I'm making this record myself and uh, that's not just because of the lack of a group or whatever I, I really did fully intend to make this record myself uh, it's been a long long time I've been uh, doing this stuff here for quite a while and uh, I just really wanted uh, wanted the message to be clear and who it was from to be clear and take all the good and the bad right directly on my own neck um, so this this album the message the music everything that's on it 
I want it to be clearly understood that this is me. This is me saying this. Uh, this is this is what I want to project. This is what I want to get out into the world at this time, and not have any uh, obscurity or any confusion that uh, it's just some project I'm involved in or it's some other people. This is me, and this is my expression. This is right from my heart. This is what I'm sending out to the world at this particular point in time. So uh, I hope you find that piece interesting. Of course, uh, I have this thing looming. Uh, anyone who's been listening to the roar for a while has, I guess, somehow become aware of the the general time frame of uh, whenever I get older every year, and that's about to happen again. I have the uh, the big four two looming on the sixth of June. So. I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting year. I think it's a really interesting number. I, I don't really put a whole lot of stock into all this being a number mumbo jumbo. Uh, it's interesting because in English we say he is or she is 42, but for example in French we would say uh, il a 42. He has 42 years. He has lived, or he has accumulated, or he has whatever. So you have 40 years under your belt. You have those years. You aren't the number, which uh, seems to make more sense to me. And uh, I guess this is another one of those occasions where I, I have to, to give the French language the thumbs up on that one and say that uh, I really like the idea much better of having 42 years than I do being a number. That being said, let's, uh, for all fairness and equality, and for all you people who might be worrying about your freedom fries and your uh, all this kind of stuff, uh, uh, let's uh, not retract my thumbs up to the to the French language, and a big uh, hello to all the French speaking people who might be listening to this. Big thumbs up to you as well, not just the language. Let's kind of uh, give a little bit of a plug to. I guess it's not quite English, but uh, it, it could be universal. Uh, you read the book in any language, the concept is the same. The thing I like best about this number is the fact that it bestows much, much wisdom upon me. Uh, the, the wisdom inherent in that number is is incredible. It's uh, it can't be calculated. It, it's it's it, it, it boggles the mind. It would take perhaps, you know, the biggest super, super duper computer of the way off future, perhaps billions of years to calculate such a number. If, of course, it were asked uh, a question such as, like, what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? Which, of course, is the case uh, in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. That is exactly what happened. They they asked that question. Okay, what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? And the computer vacillated and thought and calculated and recalculated and revacillated for, I think, a billion years or something, or more. And ultimately, when it had uh, conjugated its, uh, its response and uh, taken everything into account, it finally spat out the answer to the question of life, the universe, and everything. And of course, the answer was simply 42. So, at least for one year, I, I get to uh, bestow the wisdom of the answer to the question of life, the universe, and everything. But, don't bother asking me, because I ain't telling. So yes, there it is, uh, 42. Uh, we started doing the roar just before my 40th birthday, actually. I, I was just, um, we were just in the midst of planning the whole uh, Atlantic Fest, the first Atlantic Fest, and uh, the people coming over from Ireland. And I was also really, really just at the beginning of, of uh, the episodes, just making the final plans for my CD launch, for my Midnight Rover CD. And here I am, two years later, uh, almost to the day, in the midst of making my next album, which uh, still 
doesn't have a title. Well, I can't say it doesn't have a title. It has too many titles. That's the problem. There's, there are several potential titles, and uh, I just haven't uh, decided on one. And it's hard for me to decide because I don't feel like it's up to me to decide. I think the album has to decide for itself, and the album is still kind of, you know, kicking. Uh, what's that uh, Kate Bush album, the uh, the kick inside? That's exactly what this album is right now. So I'm going to borrow from Kate Bush. Uh, the temporary name for this album is The Kick Inside. That's what it is. Until, of course, it's done and it goes out, and then we'll give it a new name. But for now, it's just The Kick Inside. And she's kicking. I'm definitely feeling those those kicks, and uh, boy, I tell you, she's a fighter, too. You better watch out for this one. This one's gonna, gonna get you. So, uh, anyway, that whole thing is going uh, going very well. Um, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else other than what I'm doing here right now, making this record in my life. If you phoned me up right now and said, come to New York, come to Toronto, come to Dublin, come to London, do this, do that, whatever, you'd have pretty bad luck with that because I would not uh, lay down what I'm doing here now for, for anything or anybody. Maybe a person, maybe people, I might put it on hold. But for anything, no. As in an amount of money or anything like that, no. The kick inside has uh, has me in its clutches. And uh, yeah, so we'll be playing that little segment. And hope you enjoy that. Also, we have the new player up on the website, which I mentioned last time. I'd like to hear a bit of feedback from you guys as to how that's working for you. Uh, how do you like it? Is it... Uh, is it doing what you'd like it to do? Of course, you click on the headphone icon and the most recent episode of the show starts playing, which is wonderful. Then you can scroll down through and read the show notes for, for that episode or play any other episode and read its show notes. And as far as I can gather, you can actually uh, subscribe to the show from, from within that player, which is uh, pretty handy, I figure. So let us know what you think about that. And uh, all the ways for you to get in touch with us are on the website, republicofavalonradio.com. You can go on over there and click on the uh, Give Us a Roar link. And uh, i just like to put out a little call. Because I lost uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, I still have a hard drive there that's useless. It's full of all kinds of gear. But as you can tell, I actually managed to find a CD with, I don't know... I had some kind of recollection that somewhere back in the deep dark past I had backed up a bunch of stuff a bunch of uh, roar stuff the jingles and theme songs and elements and things and sure enough I had now not everything we didn't get everything back but we got enough back so I can feel comfortable to go ahead and do a show again which is absolutely wonderful I'm very very pleased about that but I would like to put out a little call to you guys and gals, if you would be so kind. It would be so, uh, what's the word? Herzlich in German, okay? There's a, what's, the, what's the word for that in English? Heartfelt? Appreciated? I don't know, whatever. Uh, it would definitely be much, much appreciated if you, you all would be so kind as to send in some little station IDs. For the roar, you have some idea. It, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. It doesn't have to have bells and whistles. In fact, uh, anything goes, really. Um, but the main thing uh, is, could, could you please send it to me as a WAV file, not as an MP3? Uh, I'm trying to kind of keep the, the quality of the show up to a certain point, and these WAV, these MP3 files, what I have to do when I receive an mp3 file is I have to upsample it and then downsample it again and then you end up sounding bad and I end up sounding good uh, comparatively speaking and uh, for these little bits uh, most of our, our IDs, our old shoutouts and IDs are gone that's one of the things that we, we didn't unfortunately get back so a lot of your old greetings and things have disappeared and uh, 
it's it's nice playing them. You know, if you don't have any means, here's the thing: if you don't have any means to do uh, a, a, a a recording, a wave file, that's okay. You can call the roar line and leave a message there, or um, you know, whatever's best for you. But I am specifically putting out a call to those of you who can actually record something at uh, 44,100 kilohertz, 16-bit, um, and just send that in to us. It can just be uh, you saying, you know, hey, this is Bill in Chicago, Illinois, and you're listening to Republic of Avalon Radio. Anything like that. Of course, if you're not in Chicago or your name's not Bill, then that really wouldn't be of much use so don't do that but uh you who you are and where you actually are that kind of thing that would be absolutely wonderful so you can figure out how to do that by going to republic of avalon radio.com and get in touch with us there, there are these uh services out there such as send space which uh seems to work at least for the moment that's at send space.com and you can go there and if you create a wave file and it's larger than well, I can't see why it should be larger. Honestly, a little shout out like that. I can't see why that should be above five megs. It really shouldn't be. So most of you should be able to just attach it uh, to an email and that should do the job. The whole idea is uh, your involvement with this whole thing here, this Republic of Avalon radio thing. It's not just me sitting around talking. Uh, really want to hear you guys in it. That's That's the joy for us when we play it back and we hear, you know, I'm, when I'm listening back to it, it's not the sound of my own voice that I like to hear. I like to hear all you guys and uh, the various places we go and things we do and so on, which involves other people. That's that's the thing that makes it worthwhile for us. So, wave file as opposed to MP3. If if we can appeal to to you all to maybe get get us some a few wave files here and there that we can use in the show, that would be absolutely fantastic. And speaking of services like SendSpace and all that, just a, a little tip here for you. There's a, a website called BugMeNot.com. And it's a very handy one. If you're going around on the internet doing this and that, and everybody wants you to sign up here, sign up there, and you just don't, you don't want to sign up for this. You just want to, just this one time, you want to go and read this article somewhere or do this little thing, and you don't want to be going through all this hassle of usernames and passwords and um, you may never even go back there again and you know and it's it's a free service anyway so you're not you're not uh, you know trying to rip anybody off or get something for free that uh, that's not already free you go to this uh, little website called bugmenot.com and uh, you can get into the service now the, I guess what it does is generates a, uh, a username and password or has ready uh, readily available ones there for you for various services and that's a handy little tip to have it's a a, a great thing to know so that's uh, just a little tip I have these little tech tips that I feel compelled to bust out and, and share with people from time to time and I guess that would be the one for this episode so uh Let's hope that's useful to somebody. Also, as of last evening, we got uh, a message from a chat, actually a Skype chat from one of our listeners who asked, Hey, what's up with the forum? I can't get in. It seems to be dead. It's gone. It's it's floated away. It, it doesn't function. Ça ne marche pas. So that kind of little little fire under me. And uh, I said to Lillian, let's, let's solve this whole thing here right now in the one fell swoop. So we did, and uh, the forum is fully up and running. Um, you can just go to the website, click on the forum button, or you can also uh, get it via email. You can send email to Republic of Avalon Radio at googlegroups.com, and that's how you would post a message to the group. But of course, I think you have to be a member, you have to sign up or something. Um, so if you go to the forum by clicking on it on the website uh, at republicofavalonradio.com and do your thing there. The information is there and you can sign up and you can chat with your fellow 
roarers. And uh, that's something we also like to see. We like to see people connecting up and uh, we're, we're generally, or you and us and everyone all included, are generally a, a good, very good bunch of people. So seeing you guys all hook up and connect is, is a great thing. So uh, get on over there and uh, check it out and see what you think. We'd like to hear from you over there on the, on the forum. And I guess the last thing that I might want to mention before carrying on with the show is Atlantic Fest 2007 the third annual I can't believe it it's it's incredible but uh, yes yes kiddies it is true the third annual Atlantic Fest is looming it's the second weekend of August and we have people coming here from all over the place from the UK and Boston and Philadelphia and Colorado and Toronto and Montreal and Nova Scotia and Maine and whatever everywhere we got we have people coming and if you think you might like to come and spend some time with us and eat some food and uh, dance and go out on the Atlantic Ocean on on a on a boat and uh, check out some of the pubs of St. John's and some outdoor stuff and uh, uh, did I say eat yes I didn't mention drink though did I certainly we won't be doing any of that there'll be none of that here folks none of that so, if you think you might be interested in attending the third annual Atlantic Fest, just let us know over on the website. That's where all the info is, all the contact stuff, as I said, under that uh, little Give Us a Roar link. And we'd love to have you on board. Some of you were planning on coming last year and uh, didn't quite make it. Well, here's your second chance. Some of you were planning on coming last year and did. Well, here's your chance to come again. Some of you had no plans whatsoever to come last year. Well, here's your opportunity to start making plans. And uh, as I said, anything we can do to help you out, help you find uh, uh, an easy way to make arrangements for accommodations and this and that and everything, just let us know and we'll fix you up any which way we can. And we're very much looking forward to it. The third annual when, when myself and Lillian started this thing, we had no idea, really. Well, you know, it might be just a one-year thing. Following year, nothing possibly would happen. Well, but here it is. This is the third year, so there we have it. And we'll be t- letting you know more about that as time uh, unfolds here, very, very soon, very shortly, about the, the performers that are confirmed i think we have uh, pretty much all our slots confirmed now but uh we won't uh, announce anything quite yet we we have a few little loose ends to tie up and uh it's just sort of taking shape right now uh behind the scenes as we speak but as information becomes available we'll let you know and if you want you can keep uh, an eye on atlanticfest.com that would be the place to keep uh, keep a watch to see what, uh, what what's happening for the third annual Atlantic Crossroads Festival. I guess the full name of it is the International Atlantic Crossroads Festival, but that's too long. So we just call it Atlantic Fest, and much to our delight, AtlanticFest.com was available, so we grabbed that, which is unbelievable when you think about it, all the, all the various places that uh, border the Atlantic Ocean that have culture and festival and all these things that could have nabbed that uh, domain. But there it was, just staring at us, and uh, so we grabbed it. Well, let's carry on with the show. A big thank you to everybody again for for all your encouragement and and all the emails and the messages you sent in. Uh, We will roar on. We absolutely will roar on. it just made us feel so good to realize that uh, that you guys are out there and uh, and that you care uh, because we certainly do ourselves here and uh, you know what would be the point what would be the point <laughs> yes what would be the point there'd be no point to it at all if uh, if it weren't for you guys so uh, a great big thank you to everybody and on we go with the roar so let's kick things off with 
a bit of music. We will be hearing a, a, a couple of pieces later on. But in the meantime, let's just start things off with some music. Let's hear something from Chris Trapper, who called in from Philadelphia. You heard him uh, at the beginning of the show. We'll also play something from Slough, my good friend there in New York. And hope everything is going well on Long Island. But first, let's kick things off with something to kind of uh, get to, get a bit of jump in our step here. This is a song that I recorded with my good friends uh, Thierry Arthur and Lekbir Halali from the Mosaic In This World album. This is a song that I wrote and actually recorded previously with my old group Pressure Drop way back when. A long time ago when the earth was green. And uh, yes, we, uh, we do have a couple of other pieces coming up later, but let's just leave those for you. Let's kick things off. This is from Mosaic In This World. This is Dub Illusion. You're listening to Republic of Avalon Radio. Ragamuffin style. Hey, 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 hey. Cause this year one is in a rubber dub style. Said all you have to do is make me go wild. Whether you're a woman, man, or a child. All you got to do is form a single file. Come when you dance to this rubber dub beat. All you have to do is get out of your seat. Get up on the floor and move your dancing feet. The dub illusion is your ultimate beat. See the Everybody in the dance hall moving 
is the moral of the story you say The king and the jocks turned out to be gay And all the little cool kids stayed in the small town Where some used to be nerd could boss them around It's our turn to be cruel It's our turn to be cruel I wish I was cool Yeah, yeah Okay, here I am in the studio and uh, just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the whole process that I'm engaged in here, uh, making this this record. It's interesting. I mean, some people might be wondering, uh, what's it like to make a record, period? What's it like to record in a studio? I'm not going to get so much into that side of things today, the demonstrating, uh, you know, the technical side of it. I want to talk more about the process uh, as a musician and uh, what's going on, how I'm going about it, how I'm approaching it, what I'm, what I'm doing, how I'm letting this music kind of come out and uh, how I'm sort of allowing it to happen. I'm not trying to force it. I'm not trying to jam square pegs into round holes and so on. And uh, I will sort of attempt anyway to articulate what, what's going on, how I'm going about this, this approach. Uh, the music in the background uh, is material for, for the record, for the new record, the bed tracks, you know, the simple elements, many of which are going to be replaced. Um, for example, the guitars are just plugged into the board and just to give myself a rough idea of, uh, of the guitar tracks themselves, much like, say, a group, for example, might rehearse somewhere and they... They wouldn't be using all the same exact equipment and they might not uh, be dressed as they're going to be on stage and all these kinds of things, you know? So they're maybe using a few practice amps and so on and so on. Because there are a lot of wonderful things that happen just when musicians get together and they play and uh, there's some spontaneity and uh, a lot of bad stuff too. But you throw out the bad stuff, that's the whole point. So a group of musicians rehearsing together, they start to find little things about each other. Uh, the bass player starts hooking in with the with the drummer on certain things. They'll know the drummer, oh, 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 here he goes, he's going there, or she's going there, whatever. And uh, the bass player will hook right in with the drummer. And uh, various little, little things like that. So uh, the process here, I'm building the songs very nonchalantly, really. I'm just slapping down tracks and uh, just being kind of uh, not so much worrying about getting things right or perfect or anything like that. Just building it in such a way that I have uh, a foundation. And I have, uh, I guess what I'm doing is I'm gradually, bit by bit, creating a group that I can jam with. And as I jam on the various instruments with the elements that I already have down, I discover little bits and oh that little little I never reached up there on the on the organ before and, and, and hit that chord. Wow, that, that works really nice. And and I can almost feel it in the music, you know, the I can almost feel the uh, the, the piano player uh, kinda winking at me or the uh, or the bass player just kinda turning his head and smiling at me or something. Hey, hey organ player, that was kinda cool. And, of course, the same with the drums, you know, uh, I lay down a bass track, the bass track is there, and then when I go to lay the drums down, I might do a certain fill. Um, it's funny, because you don't do things exactly uh, two times, you know? You don't do the same thing twice. So I'm just feeling it out, and I'm playing the drums, and I'll do a little fill, and w as that fill works, a fill, by the way, is just a, a roll or a little dig 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 or something like that. Uh, that's the first time. Second time you might you might go tick 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 or something slightly different. And uh, it's 
a funny kind of a psychological thing because when you're playing with other musicians, it's not necessarily all about a visual wink or a nod or a smile. Uh, I've never really had uh, had that sort of uh, information available to me, uh, but I do know from my experience that uh, playing you can kind of feel sometimes a lift from the other musicians when you do something especially when you're in a lead role like uh, say a drummer uh, in the type of music that that I tend to play when I when I'm playing drums um, it's very much a lead role I've, I've said before it's kind of like being a, a conductor with two batons really <laughs> so you you really have to uh, kind of lead the way um, as, a, as a reggae drummer not, not all reggae drummers do so much some some just kind of sit in the back and I find reggae really needs that um, myself that kind of uh, the drummer has to be really kind of at the front of the wagon um, with the bass player you know right beside him or just barely behind him kind of thing or underneath him is more like it uh, so on a double double decker bus the, uh, the drummer is up front driving and the uh, the, uh, the bass player is either to his right uh, as a kind of a co-pilot or or down on the on the next level down with a with with a wheel and, and a gear shift of his own kind of thing in case the uh, the whatever anyway uh, so much for for the for the analogies but the thing is um, with this whole thing you 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 feel that thing you feel that lift when you do something that that uh, that propels the song forward or upward to to an, to another level uh, when you make a sound that becomes a, a really class a really good ingredient to the to the stew that you're making that which is the song made up of all these different elements or chili as I, as I like to put it quite often more so than stew stew can be pretty bland sometimes you know it can be kind of like hot salty water with Potato floating around in it and stuff like that. That's not the kind of stew that, that I'm fond of, but chili. Chili is chili is something that tends to have maybe more flavor, more zing, and uh, that's why I like using that analogy. But yeah, you feel that lift <clears throat> when you do something and uh, a little roll or a fill, or even sometimes when you just don't do any rolls or fills and you just kind of kick back, or I would say lean forward uh, as a drummer and get really solid into the groove and that just kind of that kind of hypnotizes your fellow musicians and with the right discipline and the right sort of uh, uh, what would you call that uh, I guess relationship and respect and so on and, and familiarity as well uh, they, they'll know okay this is let's dig in and everyone digs in together kind of thing so if you are all those musicians in the group then uh, you've got a bit of an advantage because you know uh, the drummer wh- wh- who, who is you knows very well the bass player who is you uh, knows the keyboardist who is you knows the guitarist who is you and so on and so forth but that whole spontaneity thing is pretty difficult because you never get a chance to uh, imp- improvise with yourself you never get a chance to, to jam with yourself so that's why I'm doing it this way. That's why I'm taking that kind of loose approach to to the album. Instead of trying to lay down final tracks every time I approach the, 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 the console, I'm not intending to do that at all. I'm letting myself get more and more familiar with the other instruments that I'm playing, uh, with the various hats on, and really becoming a band as opposed to just me laying down this track, me laying down that track, and then mix them all together. Really, really allowing the whole thing to breathe and grow. So and I am noticing, as time progresses with these tracks, that uh, there is a band taking shape here. There is a sound uh, starting to develop. That's the magical side of this. 
So I'm going going about it that way more so than just simply just uh, put, making beats and then putting chords on beats and then putting melodies on top of chords and things like that. I'm really taking that approach where um, it's more about the band, I suppose. So that's that's what I'm that's what I'm doing uh, with this recording. I'm uh, really kind of getting to know from a playing perspective uh, the other musicians on the record, which are of course all me. But if I just one by one treated it like each me walks in and just lays down his tracks and leaves, uh, that you would hear that on the record, and you, you hear lots of records like that even with bands. You know, groups of musicians, there's five people in the group and whatever, and never never two of them are playing together on a, on a record. That's, that's probably more common these days than it is rare. More the rule than the exception. So the drummer comes into the studio by himself, lays down drum tracks, and then, you know, several days later when he's finished, uh, the uh, bass player comes in, lays down his bass tracks, and then later the guitar rhythm guitar player, you know, so on and so forth. And of course, me sort of not having 15 arms, I have, I'm forced to take that approach. I have to lay the tracks down separately. But um, what I'm doing, instead of trying to like show up at the studio and get all takes down, I'm showing up at the studio, uh, I'm sending all the, the band members in and saying, none of this is going to stay on the record. What I want you to do is I just want you to, to feel loose and comfortable and just jam the song. Just jam it out, you know? Um, so just lay down your tracks and, uh, and carry on and we'll call you back in later. And one by one they all come in and do that. And they all experiment and try different things and pull the music in different directions. So that you end up with something then where they can all go back and listen at the same time. And talk to each other and say... You know, hey Johnny, that that little rhythm riff you started playing there at the beginning of that song, and then you didn't play it anymore. That's killer. Can can we? And then one of them grabs a guitar down off the wall, and they start looking at that little that little ding 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 whatever little little riff uh, Johnny was doing, and uh, they say let's let's keep that in the verses. And then there's this other more open thing you were doing there. Uh, that I think works really well in the choruses. And the, the group can get together and make those decisions and really, really kind of uh, dive into the creative process. And suddenly you get the difference between just four or five guys showing up and laying their tracks down. You end up with four or five musicians woven uh, together and, and you get this creative process. Well, what I'm doing is I'm doing that with myself. And the way I'm doing that is by not trying to lay down uh, final album tracks as I'm recording. I'm letting myself go loose and I'm just jamming and, and improvising and listening back and finding the bits that work and kind of having that discourse with the drummer and the, let's say I'm just jamming some organ along with, uh, with, the, with the other tracks that are there. Um, after I'm finished jamming, I go sit back in play mode and I kind of become, while I'm listening back, I, I become, from time to time during various bits, I become the drummer saying, hey, you're stepping on my little fill there, buddy. Or I become the uh, guitar player saying, you're kind of clouding the, uh, the, 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 the waters there for me on that bit. That's where I do my little thing there, you know, you see? And then uh, the organist in me says, yeah, I know what you mean, guitar player, yeah. I'll stay out of your way there. I'll put, how about if I put that chop in, you know, two bars later? And the guitar player says, let's just try it. And so I go back and I have another go at it. And I make the guitar player happy. So I don't know if, if, if this is exactly sinking in, if it's making sense. Uh, but that's exactly what I'm doing. And it's, it's, it's quite the, the interesting process, I must say. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't come at this project, this album, with preconceived notions. That wasn't my plan. I hadn't intended, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. I just came at it with a completely open mind, and I started laying tracks down. The one thing I did uh, start out with was the intention not to get too 
caught up and uh, worried about laying down perfect tracks off off the top. That's when I noticed. That's I guess when it really s- struck me that by doing that, I was able to just completely open up and and jam and and uh, and find all these things. Um, that's okay. Let me just play this little bit here. Um, okay, here's a song called New World Revolution that's on the record. Um, well, here's the original version, actually. Let me just play a little bit of the original version from uh, the Pressure Drop CD, my, my group from, from uh, antiquity. Here's, uh, here's the sort of intro section of New World Revolution from 19... When was that? 1994, I guess. Anyway, here it is. All right, and as you can hear there, um, there's a group of musicians playing together, and uh, there it is. Now, the core of that is a group of musicians who were playing together quite well in a live situation, going into a studio to to make a recording. And uh, the drums and bass were done first, and we played those together live. So drums and bass went down first, and then we sort of threw in the uh, the rhythm tracks and things like that one by one. And we had uh, a guitar player uh, called Roger House come in and just kind of improvise. He, I don't think he really knew the songs very well, but a very good fluid uh, guitar player. I guess probably known more for blues than anything, but uh, I wouldn't limit him to that. Uh, I, I would just say he's a he's a magnificent guitar player. So anyway, but but there's the thing. Now, let me just play you the, the newer version. And you'll notice there's a little thing going on on the organ. This melody on the organ. That really sets the tone. I find listening to the old version, the snippet I just played you, I find it sounds a little rushed or a little bit sort of uh, angsty or, or, or something. Where... That's not the feeling I had for the song even at the time, uh, but trying to communicate that to the other musicians was kind of difficult without just completely taking everybody by the throat and, and trying to uh, force them to do what you would do if you were playing their instrument, <laughs> which you don't want to do. Um, you know, it's a respect thing. So you make a compromise and you realize, okay, well, when this record goes out, Everything's not going to sound exactly the way I would like it to sound or the way I hear it in my head. And and that's okay. And everybody makes their contribution and, and there's, you know, the compromise is made fine. In this case, I, I've got, uh, I've got, all the musicians in this case are closer than brothers because they're, they're me, 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 and me. And we all do understand. We all do hear the same thing in our heads. And, uh, but at the same time, we all realize that we're going to have to work together on this in order for us to be able to make room for each other and, and not step all over each other uh, throughout the songs and so on and so forth. So just by jamming this song, I discovered this really nice little simple, simple melody on the organ that really, I think, sets the mood for the song and just gives it the, the right feel that, that I wanted, even way back. Um, but I couldn't find it with those particular musicians because they would never ever steer it that way. And when you're playing drums, for example, you can only play so fast or so loud or so hard and, and uh, you know, you can't sort of beat what you're hearing in your head out into the air uh, so much. But anyway, so here's the intro. I hope there hasn't been too much time go by since my playing the old intro, so you can remember it, or you could rewind back and listen. Anyway, here's the newer one, and and listen to this melody on the organ that kicks in.
Now, of course, the first one you heard was the finished uh, commercial release. And the one you just heard then was just uh, the, the basic bed tracks. Completely unfinished and uh, more more stuff to go in there. But I don't know if you might notice a difference in the rhythm. Even the rhythm itself is, is just... Uh, it's just more... I, I, I can't put my finger on it. Lillian says it's it's more solid. She says it's more mature. Those are two two ways of describing it. There's something else going on as well. Uh, there's a depth and a breadth, I guess, that wasn't there before. And uh, I don't know. A simplicity... Um, it's so it's so hard I can't put my finger on it but it's there and and there's that organ bit that makes 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 my ears perk up when that organ kicks in I'm like okay hmm, I, I'm getting a feeling of, of what's coming here and what's coming is what the organ implies so it does go kind of hand in glove the organ doesn't imply something and then something you know the opposite of that comes up and happens the organ really does lead us into the to the vibe of the song you know there's a war at your door can you hear the people fighting just looking around the world and seeing all the things going on and that kind of uh, oh boy you know uh, sort of thing it does kind of set that up quite nicely and I stumbled into that simply by just allowing myself to jam along with uh, the other musicians uh, who who are me as well. Um, I never would have thought that lick on the organ up. It only happened uh, um, just through improvisation. I was just sitting back, just feeling loose, loosey goosey, and uh, just started the track, uh, rolled the tracks, and uh, put my hands on the keyboards and I just doo, doo, I just started playing that uh, that little riff and as soon as I played it I just kind of went boy I like that uh, and I just carried on and then I found the uh, the rhythm uh, here I'll just put this back again and let you concentrate on I'll just play a little bit of just the basic groove now listen for the organ uh, you hear the organ it's, it's just kind of bubbling uh, that's what I call it it's just kind of bubbling along with the song. We didn't have that last time. Um, we had uh, Paul Kinsman come in and play organ on the Pressure Drop CD. And uh, Paul's a, an absolutely wonderful uh, keyboardist uh, all around. But he didn't have much time to do that thing. He didn't rehearse with us. That's the thing. He didn't. We didn't uh, go out to a farmhouse somewhere and spend a couple of weeks just sort of... Uh, you know, cooking soup and uh, drinking beer and, and uh, playing music all day and working on the music. So he really came in as a session musician and uh, and did his thing and did it very, very well. But never discovered that bubble on, on this particular song just because he simply didn't have the time to discover that bubble. And I mean, you know, fine for me now to, to be talking about it uh, years later, but... I've had that more time, and I spent the time here in making this record to actually just, for hours on end, just jam with myself with the other tracks and, and discover little things. So you hear that little bubble happening in the organ. I'll just kind of throw it at you again. Have, have a listen to this. Listen for the, the organ just bubbling along with the, with the rhythm. Yeah, so there it is, and uh, I would not have had that bubble or that uh, little lick uh, at the beginning, that little melody thing, uh, just as a as a preconceived notion in my mind. Uh, they weren't there, but by uh, taking this approach and uh, doing it this way, allowing myself the the freedom to improvise and and just jam with uh, with the other tracks and record them and then go back and listen and kind of have that sort of discussion with the other musicians about what's working and what's not working and all that stuff, uh, I'm able to do that. Much the same way as a, a, a group of musicians would 
work together and, and have a series of rehearsals, say before a recording or show, and uh, hopefully be able to be honest and, and uh, uh, constructively uh, critical of each other and work together to pull the whole thing into the same pot, as it were, to make that chili. So we get all those, just the right spices and all the right ingredients all together and stuff like that. So so that's, that's pretty much it for that. And it's a very exciting process. I would uh, highly recommend it. Uh, it's interesting what you can learn uh, making a record by yourself and how I can pass that on and you could apply that with a group of musicians. So if you if you're working with a group of musicians, if you kind of apply my principle, what I'm what I'm talking about, um, this is assuming, of course, that uh, you know there's no big ego problems in the group and stuff like that, and everybody gets along and respects each other. Uh, but if you take that approach, where you just just let it go, take a song, even if somebody in the group is really strong on no listen, this is the way it is, and, and uh, you know, it can't be any other way. What you do is say, okay, let's say that you're right, but let's just take this song, and let's just kind of squeeze it this way and that way. Let's just identify what the main riff is, you know, what's the main groove in this? Uh, the verse groove, the chorus groove, whatever. And let's just play it, and let's just, for a while, let's let the guitar player just explore different chords, or explore different... Uh, scales, different uh, melodies, different potential lead bits, and so on. And now let's do it again. Let's let the sax player kind of open up on this and get soft and get loud and do various things. And uh, Okay, and now for a while, let's let the uh, the organ player just kind of, or the keyboardist or whatever, just kind of open up and we'll all just keep the groove going and let's just let the keyboardist try different patches on a synthesizer. Let him go through his sound banks and just try anything and if you hear something that sounds completely sick or stupid don't stop keep playing just keep the groove going for for the keyboardist and let them uh, let them find their niche in the song then when it's all done the person who wrote the song and brought the song to the group in the first place who thought there was only one way he or she might at that point say gee whiz you know something uh i'm really glad we did this because that little guitar riff right there that that we discovered is I just never would have thought of that, and, and that's brilliant. That really does something nice, and uh, various, you know, how many examples of that would pop up with, with the various instruments? And then, you know, you add all those little things all up together, and I've always said that the song is bigger than the, than the person anyway. So what you're doing there is you're, you're, you're creating a, a kind of a, a, a medium. You're, you're, you're creating a, a communication channel where the song can talk to you. You're opening yourself up and just saying, okay, tell me. Tell me what you need. Tell me what uh, what we need to do here. Not what I think needs need be done or, or what can I force into it or whatever. And it's that whole discourse. It's that uh, letting the song talk to you. And uh, boy, the song is way smarter than, than, than you'll ever be. Uh, I've always said before that... Uh, any one particular song that a songwriter writes is bigger than the person's notion of all the songs that, that, that they'll write in their whole lifetime. And that music itself is bigger than the sum total of all the musicians that have ever lived and, and are alive now and ever will live in, in the future. Uh, and taking that, that approach to it, uh, that's a very respectful approach. Uh, I think you, you can tend to get more out of it when all is said and done at the end of the day. Uh, the reward is is better. And it kind of takes a load off your shoulders as well, because by listening to the music and, and letting the music itself tell you what it needs, you feel less like you kind of grafted it on or, the, or that you made it up or, or whatever. So you kind of, uh, you kind of let the song uh, have its freedom. And in exchange, you get the freedom to not have to worry about feeling like you've kind of pushed something where it shouldn't have gone and so on and so forth you can just uh, and then you can just sit back and do whatever the critics say well critics schmidics you know uh, so you can you can just pretty much relax and be comfortable with the knowledge that that you engaged in an open process you 
uh, respectfully address the music and uh, let it address you, and uh, you ended up with something that uh, you feel had a life of its own and a spirit of its own, and uh, perhaps that way, when you get on to the next project, you know that them songs are going to be different songs all together, and and you'll uh, engage in that process again, and you won't find yourself trying to reinvent the wheel over and over and over and over. Although in much kind of popular music, people want the wheel invented over and over. They want uh, that person to put out that same record over and over again with different titles. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't tend to work that way. And that would uh, drive one to madness pretty quickly, I think. So what you have to do, I suppose, if you appreciate an artist, uh, it it has to be more about the spirit of that artist and... uh, who that person really is and go along with them on their journey as they explore the music and life and and how life influences music and music influences life and uh, it can be very rewarding that way if you hear one record by an artist and you hear the second record and the second record isn't an attempt to imitate the first record and that disappoints you then maybe you're not listening for the right reasons or maybe the artist is under the gun from a record label and trying to force out some music that they're not comfortable with I mean there's several reasons why that can happen but you will get to know the artists that are actually on that journey that that are are on that great adventure of life slash music and you'll find a wagon that you'll gladly sit in and uh, not mind a bit of rain here a bit of sun there a little bit of wind over there and uh, it'll be a much re- much more rewarding experience I think in any case that's that's the uh, that's the long and the short of that it's a it's a great it's a great process that that I'm engaged in here and uh, I will just leave it at that this is uh, this is my kind of little spiel on on the process of making a reggae album in 2007. from California and just wanted to thank you for another much anticipated and very long awaited and much appreciated rendition of The Roar. I am grateful that you are keeping up with it and welcome back to my house. (laughs) You know what, I'm going to do something I've intended to do for a long time. I'm going to send you a few of my songs. I wrote these, gosh, probably back in the 1980s, 1990s and we had a group called Cross Country which was together for about two years from around 1989 till around 1991. We didn't have digital recording at the time. We all lived across the country from each other. We all worked for IBM and we all just kind of had four track recorders and we just did a lot of home recording and we sent email back and forth. Yes, we did have email and would critique each other and send tapes back and forth and add our parts to the songs and stuff. So that's kind of how we built our stuff. I wrote some of the music and I'm going to send you a couple of files of things that I wrote. You can just hear them and toss them out, I don't really care. The person who did all of the arranging and recording of these songs is no longer in this world. He died, sad to say, years ago. But he could play just about anything with strings on it. So I'm going to send you these two songs, just kind of throw them out here for you to listen to other people have heard these. Hope Povenmeyer has heard them. Lynette and Maria have heard them, so they'll probably just skip past these, but I didn't know if you'd ever heard them before. 
But listen to them and do what you like with them. I really don't care. As I said, I just write them and hand them out. Huge fan of folk and Celtic music. And I'm glad that you put some Celtic music on your podcast. I was about to complain that you hadn't. Welcome back and glad to hear from you. Here we go. And do what you want with them. Thanks for listening to this. And bye from warm California, which needs to be warmer because it hasn't gotten into late spring yet. It still feels like March. Take care. Bye for now.
Alrighty, well, that just about does it for another episode of Republic of Avalon Radio. Thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks to you newcomers. Welcome aboard. And a great big thanks to everybody for sticking with us and being patient during our long hiatus. And of course, a big thanks to Mary Emerson for sending in those couple of tunes. More than happy to play them and uh, hope you enjoyed hearing them in a, in a slightly different context. And of course, we hope that you folks enjoyed those tunes as well. So from Lillian and myself, in the meantime, all the best to everybody. Take care of each other and we'll catch you next time right here on Republic of Avalon Radio.